Hey guys, I'm Adam at Leeds Fest with Tide Line. Today, how are we doing? Yo, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. fucking good. Really good. Great. How are you, Sophie? With an eight. I'm going to one-up that. What's better than good and great? Excellent. Fine. Fine. Oh, Phenomenal. lovely. You know, fine. Winning. Phenomenal. Nice. We're doing it right. <laughs> I'm very well, thanks. It's been a long fucking day, but we've got here eventually. <laughs> it sounds like you guys have had a worse day than what we've had, but we're here at last. So um, what are your thoughts on the festival so far? Have you had a chance to look around, or has it basically been drop off, play, fucking pack up, and that's it straight here? So so far it's been, we played in um, London last night. Well, we flew in from Australia yesterday, straight to the venue and played in London last night, and then straight to here, and then kind of jumped on stage oh, so it's straight but straight this off. festival is fucking awesome man like it yeah yeah it was like <laughs> the, the setup up. here is like so mental it's really cool yeah, it's really crazy good at the minute. i think it's like a psycho setup so i didn't expect to like obviously the main stage is fucking huge it's massive yeah it's it really freaks good. me out i look up at it and i'm like <laughs> <"Wah."> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, muse a huge. Band like muse could definitely play on like yeah muse could definitely play at this festival if you if you can sort it out, Muse should play this festival next year because they definitely suit this. <laughs> Sorry, are you? Oh, mu Mussy. Oh right, so that. <laughs> oh, Mussy on the oh, lineup might that, actually be that, Muse. Mussy oh. Muse. <laughs> Mussy is Muse. Dudes, right. I don't know. Game over. Like it's right. it's one of those times where right. delirium oh. levels are setting <laughs> in. Yeah. Uh, There's jet be. lag. <laughs> So uh, going up from that, who would you say are your festival must-sees of the weekend? Oh. If you could only pick like five bands to see. Um, of the weekend, like the whole weekend? The whole weekend, you can pick five. Of the whole weekend. If you need help, there's a big-ass post. Well, you need to, okay, okay. <laughs> like, First uh, off, you have to watch Narwhals, because they're yeah. incredible. We toured with them in Australia about t two years ago, and they're awesome. They're, they're playing the lock-up and the pit stage. Um, I'm, like, I'm not going to look at it, but Muncie Girl... Can I just say, I just saw that Honey Blood are playing. They're they are fucking, fucking awesome. They are so good, I yeah. really want to see those dudes, but obviously we're not going to be here for it. No, they're really, really cool good. and try and see all the bands that we... No, no, no. All the, Honey all Blood the are really bands. great. I, I actually really dig those dudes. No, they're cool. Um, I like heaps of the bands on there. Uh, okay, so we said months ago, <laughs> right? Circle yeah. Eight, six, Circle eight. Don't Don't waste the five. All right, Pond. <laughs> you have to watch Pond. They're from Perth with us as well. Legends. Incredible musicians. We, we beat Pond at the uh, customs border when we got in, just like to say that. They, <laughs> were still, they were still getting their passports processed when we... Uh, so you're already won upon them, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're the better band, but we're better at get clearing customs, so... <laughs> yeah. I think it's because we had our COS numbers ready. Um, it's I something that our manager <laughs> helped us out with, so thank you so much. Oh. That, 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 I just like to say, like, best band name I've seen, though, is Flat Flatbush Zombies. <laughs> yeah, I'd seen that, I was like, yes. <laughs> All right. And also Fizzy Blood. Fizzy Blood, very good, yeah. Fizzy Blood, a good friend of ours, uh, is involved with those guys, and they're fucking awesome. They're really, really good. good. We interviewed band. them earlier, they were cool. Oh, actually, and also, I, I think we missed them today, but Slotface, we really want to yeah, see Slotface, again. Slotface, very good. Um, if we can. New math, they're fucking sick. All right, uh, we, we've wasted our five, I think we've we? literally gone through the entire fucking lineup. <laughs> all right, but yeah, all those bands, everyone should watch. So um, let's talk a little bit about your set earlier. Well, just pretty much just come off packed up. Um, did you get a decent reception? Better than what you expected or what you expected? It was full. Ooh. It was a good crowd. No, was cool. Mine, Sorry, yeah, yeah, there was a good crowd there. Um, we tried to rile them up. Um, I'm not sure who was playing after us, but I think there was a definite, definite uh, huge following for the band after us there. But I think we got them on board, and we did all right. Yeah. We said we said some pretty inappropriate things, and I saw a little 12-year-old standing on the. Uh, <laughs> okay. On That'll be the fine. Uh, we say fuck a lot, so we said fuck a couple I'm sure of times, and there was this beautiful the little blonde baby boy staring at me, and I was like. Fuck, fuck off. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit. I mean... Fuck. Can't. Curse this earth. <laughs> this fuck terrible time that child. we live in. <laughs> so um, for anybody that hasn't heard of you guys before, how would you like best describe your sound to potential new listeners? Oh, sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright, for by thy gracious golden glittering gleams, 
I trust to take of truth this be spite. But stay, oh uh, spite. <laughs> but Mark, poor <laughs> knight, what dreadful doll is here? Is it? As do you see, Otto. how can it be? Oh, dainty duck, oh dear. That's all I'm going to say. All right. And that sums it up. And, uh, and, and Delta Blues. So um, what does it mean to you guys playing like a prestigious festival like Leeds and Reading? Like, what kind of doors do you reckon that's going to open to you in the future? And I don't like. I we're really just. I really hope we can finally like go to Coles and ins like there's a place called Coles, it's like a supermarket. Yeah, like Instead of giving getting the 85 cent bread, we get the two dollar twenty five one. The good bread. Yes. The good shit. That's like it, man. The champagne bread. Yes. <laughs> I think that's champagne the thing. Bread. That's what we want. But like you know, for us, like playing these festivals is like. Um, like, w we signed on with a UK agent, uh, like, a couple of years ago, and he's gotten us to play, like, these awesome festivals, and w I don't, we don't deserve it, you know? Like, fucking, what are you guys doing? <laughs> these people are paying good money to I be here. Like, because we've played this festival now, maybe this boutique festival in Perth called Camp Dugs will let us play there. I'm hoping that, because it's going to be a fucking a travesty and a half, in a good way. <laughs> Thank you. So um, you've got Done Days coming out in September. Um, what can we expect from that? Is it? You can, you can expect an album. We can expect uh, songs. N uh, nine songs with a secret track. Apparently, the no, tenth ten song's showing ten up. Songs with oh, a secret I track. Fuck my life. That's why there's ten songs showing up because there's ten songs no, in a secret no. track. Okay, <laughs> no, nah, but um, yeah. So we. <laughs> We jumped in the studio in like February, March, in between. We came to the UK in between sessions, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like we're really proud of it. It's been a long time coming and, you know, it's our it first album. But we've been fucking, been jamming for a long time. So, so we're keen to actually yeah, get Yeah, so album. a long time coming then. So um, what was the best and worst part of recording? Falling into this place where you never thought you would fall, really. It was one of those journeys in time. Um, I can't help it. I'm in the mood. Um, no, <laughs> I think... Can you repeat the question one more time? I was recording. What was, well, what was, that, what was the high and lows? Oh, okay. Well, okay. Lows were when um, there was a particular song, uh, Where Were You, the second track. And the ending is really fucking hard to sing. So I think I got, I started seeing like these black circles and I was pushing it really hard and I'm like, I can't do it, I feel sick, I need to vomit, I, I don't know what I'm doing. That was hard for me. Um, that so we just added a guitar solo there because that was really easy. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, well, you're a shred lord, so it makes sense. Um, that was one of the low points for me because I was like, oh fuck, I have to push through. But then, in turn, it became a high point because I pushed through and I did it. Uh, high point was uh, sorry, a uh, like couple of blunts after the the recording sessions, you know. KFC, <laughs> KFC. That's my low point. The amount of KFC that was <laughs> true. Oh yeah, um, I don't know. I had, had no high or low points. I just <laughs> a it steady was, medium. It's a very mediocre album. Don't buy it. <laughs> it's three stars on iTunes. Rate it now. <laughs> is, your, is your favorite color beige? Nah, dark. Well, I mean, no, 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 wait. That's not a colour. That's a. I have a high point. Uh, can I talk about it? Okay, so high point was not when we were high, but when our engineer, Dave Parkin, told us that the most comfortable he's ever felt in his life was when he crashed his scooter and he was laying on top of it and the, like, the exhaust pipe was there and it was kind of burning his leg a little and he had this comfortability about it and he sort of took a real deep breath in and out and he's like... Man, I know what life is about. And I know what living is about. And we made this thing called the Scooter Comfort Zone, and that is the high point I think for all of us. I think everybody's in search for their Scooter Comfort Zone. And I think we were originally really pushing towards calling the record Scooter Comfort Zone. Label didn't like it. They fu record labels. Fuck them. They're the best. Yeah. <laughs> they are. They're, they're, they're actually awesome. They are. They are. Really cool. <laughs> but fucking yeah. Scooter Comfort Zone. <laughs> is this the bonus track? Yeah. <laughs> it is now. So what would you say your like, influences at the moment, and is there anything that you want to experiment with musically-wise? Oh. Anything that you've seen bands doing, like, fuck yeah, we'll do a bit of that. I really like the belligerence. They're bringing back the recorder. So when I was in year seven, I, I obviously I loved music, and I enrolled in the recorder ensemble, and I got to play the treble, which was a recorder that was like twice the size 
and it it, it really got my you mean the big one? yeah the big guy <laughs> no 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 it was a treble and then there was a tenor so there was three and I was the I was the medium <laughs> medium medmoy I was the medmoy on that and I think I really keen to get some sort of like weird maybe like pan flute or some shit happening could be a uh, good vibe uh pff, jesus what do i want i want a bar on stage no seriously like i, I know bands have done it like acdc and stuff like that done in the past but like a, a cool little bar not just with alcohol just vibes That's just cool. like a vibe guy so so you see like if you had on side of stage someone there what yeah, to someone, to someone to like say hype words and like tell you everything's gonna be okay. Um, I think that's what your wife's for, buddy. We'll pass you on to Matt. So like, <laughs> you know, you know what, man? It's all about the music. It's not about the alcohol. How dare you? I'm just joking. Keep telling yourself up. Yeah, but in my influence was I realized during the recording er, set part of the album, the recording part. I've got something with some names. But um, yeah, I think I'm gonna start an emo band. And maybe we could, our next record could be an emo record. Oh, no, no, we're going to do a post-rock record, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, can I just say, I think one thing that I really want to experiment with is having a person on stage or just with us the whole time t TMing that makes Matt wear a shirt under his jumpers. Because a jumper is like a, a sweater or a cardigan, right? They have jumpers in there. Yeah, oh, I don't know if you call it jumpers. We're very familiar yeah. with jumpers. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 Breaking news. I don't know what you guys call it. I'm just like it putting it so Matt, what Matt does, Most he probably. never yeah. wears a shirt under his like jumper. So well, on stage, he's, he's got this for. thick. He wants to go for that image. The sh the sh I've got it. Well, I, I want to experiment with someone that's like, dude, just put a shirt on. And if you get hot, take it off instead of sweating up. How, how are you, nipples? Can we check them out? Are we? Pretty chafy. No, nah, I reckon next question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, get them out. I'll get them out in the... Three more questions time, I reckon. All right, we can fit that in. So, uh, touring plans. I know you've got an Australian tour coming up. Uh, what else you got planned? Or is it literally just the Australian tour? <laughs> it's literally that. Then we're calling it quits, I think. I mean, that is best for everybody. Oh, I kind of like start... Yeah, we've got, we've got a, an album tour coming out in Australia. Um, and then I think we're going to make a couple more trips back here. This is our third in the last six months. Awesome. So, you know... I can get used to us, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think we'll, yeah, I think we'll come after we've toured the album in Australia and done that type of thing. We'll try and get back out here again. Awesome. So I'm um, going back to touring, playing shows. Uh, what's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you at a tour or at a festival besides getting your nipples checked out in one question time? Oh, oh. Can I can I can I leave that one for a second? Because <laughs> yeah, like this is this is this is my this is my unfortunate little thing that I do. Oh. <laughs> Dirt. Okay, so after a few, I tend to sleepwalk. Oh. And when I sleepwalk, I tend to uh, relieve myself with urination. <laughs> by the other one. I'm glad you fucking put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So you're, you're on a separate tour bus from the future. I feel like that's definitely that's, that's definitely an embarrassing point of my my person personal sort of. Uh, all right, we thing. accept it. It's fine. We all have our embarrassing things. What? Can I ask a quick question of Nick? So, you know, your most embarrassing thing on tour is um, sleepwalking and pissing. Yeah. What, are the, what, what are the top three things that you've enjoyed pissing on while sleepwalking? Oh, uh, laptops, in order. The luggage. Top. Who's laptop? Who's laptop? Mine. Sophie's laptop. My laptop. Matt's Me luggage. Uh, and then, I don't know. What else? What, is there another one? I, my favorite thing that Nick's pissed on is um, I... Um, so yeah, <laughs> my luggage wasn't my favourite thing. That was oh, the worst thing. I can imagine that's right that was the, the worst thing because I had no more clothes for tour. <laughs> that's why you don't wear shirts. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't wear shirts. Can I just say, at least it wasn't electronics, all right? Yeah. Oh. My favourite thing is, um, uh, can I, yeah, Nick's wife lent me a pedal board. Right. Um, and I was like sussing out before I was going to buy it. And then on the tour that she was lending it to me, he fucking pissed on it. <laughs> and then afterwards, I was like, oh, I'll buy your pedal board. And she's like, yeah, here, this is how much. And I'm just like, hmm, <laughs> no. What, how much of a discount can I get? But Ethan was like, call it a piss count. <laughs> <laughs> well, how much of a piss count can you get? But, you know, I just couldn't, I couldn't follow through because it's a disease and that's hell sad. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, what advice would we you give to here. smaller bands that maybe want to get to this level, you know, where you're playing festivals, you're coming all over the world at the minute, playing shows? 
like how to get to your level at what you are at the minute? I think it's super important to firstly put out of your mind like this um, sort of like stepping stone thing where you're really forcing yourself and putting yourself down because you might not be at that level yet. It's super important just to like keep having fun, just doing what you're doing and eventually I reckon it will happen if you just show the hard work and stuff like that. So yeah, Stay absolutely. true to what you do and be professional but don't let people take advantage of you for exposure. When anyone starts saying do it for exposure, yeah, you tell don't, them get yeah, fucked. Yeah, don't go for that. You just like show them your nips, right, Matt? Was oh, this the free, question? That's free questions. Here we go. There it is. I haven't cut, I sometimes trim the hair around my nipple with toenail scissors. Wait, can and we I haven't that? done that recently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. There it is. That was, that was a big moment. That was, that was the big reveal. And finally, do you have any messages for anybody watching back at home? Oh, this is going back oh home. Fuck. Hopefully. Home? We've, we've got a few bands in Australia that we work with, so I'm sure they'll okay, probably see it. Okay, so if it's home, I'm just going to say, fuck. Met these dudes a couple of years ago. Weirdly enough, we're in the UK right now for the third, oh, fourth, fifth time ever. Didn't think we'd be here. And I guess you can rely on your family at home for the support and being there all the time and giving you that little bit of a push in the right direction. So thanks. Yeah. Love you. Oh, I mean, I'd like to say thanks to everyone back home. Yeah. Matt, are you gonna <laughs> propose? Are you gonna yeah. propose right now to your girlfriend? I reckon let's just do it. Fuck it. <laughs> I can't do it. She's in India. She's actually not in Australia, so I. She might may not see this. Do it and we'll post it to her. <laughs> Right here, yeah, we'll do it. We'll put it up. You can, you can just tag her in it when we put it up. <laughs> Guys, you're cheapening this experience this for me. We <laughs> know it's happening now. Um, <laughs> I can repropose my wife to give you a. Puppy, you're my puppy, <laughs> and you're my best friend. My puppy's my best friend. I have a cat called Ryu, um, like from Street Fighter. He's fucking sick. And I love my family, and I love a particular boy. He's not a boy. He's a man. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's it. No worries, guys. Thanks so much for your time uh, and enjoy the rest of the festival. Do you see Matt's nipples again? I reckon we should just for one more time yeah, get sweet. a full get a full glimpse of that going on. There it is. You got that zoom action happening? The, the, the no. grand reveal. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks dudes. so much, guys. Take, Take care. It easy. Thank you.